it's here. Some people say that this was the birth of the Attitude Era. Some people may say it wasn't. But I do know this. The Austin Era has begun. As JR would say, Stone Cold! Stone Cold! So, WrestleMania 14. We've seen a lot of things have WrestleMania 14. We've seen the Austin Era has begun. We have seen Iron Mike Tyson knock out Shawn Michaels. We have seen brother versus brother. We have seen uh, a dumpster match. We have seen a lot of things in WrestleMania 14. And this was the height of of the Monday Night Wars between WCW and WWF. Yes, they were getting their ass kicked in 1997. WrestleMania 13 sucked. And same thing with WrestleMania 12, but it was all right. But this is the pinnacle right here. And joining me today on this review for the Attitude Era, what better way to review the Attitude Era than with not Deion Sanders, but Primetime? Yo, yo, yo. And with that opening, I can think of a lot of other people I could do the ad to there with. But I'll just play. I'm gonna be serious. Oh, you want me to find the intro like this, man? Uh, no. I could be my face the whole time. I mean, you, you, your 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 jaw can't keep up for that. So, WrestleMania 14. You know, prime time. Did you start watching wrestling at this time? I didn't know I did. All right. Not at this time. No. Okay. No. Okay. So. I, I, I started rarely. Okay. Rarely. Okay. Because everybody, you know, has said they have started watching wrestling in the Attitude Era, whether it be 99, 2000, or anything of that nature. This I hold very special to me because this was the first pay per view that I watched. Bought. WrestleMania 14. And I have every year since WrestleMania 14, I have watched every pay per view of every every WrestleMania all the way down to now. There's only one WrestleMania. There's only two WrestleManias that I did not order, and one because I got in trouble uh, when I was a teenager, so my dad took my TV away, so I couldn't order WrestleMania. And the second time was it was just so bad I refused to order it. So, ah, twenty-seven. That's exactly what it was. I refused to order that piece of shit. I was not spending sixty-four dollars for WrestleMania twenty-seven, and WrestleMania nineteen is the one I really wanted to see, but I got in trouble, so I got on punishment, so I could not see it. But WrestleMania fourteen was the start. This was, like I said, the height of the Attitude Era. We uh. Vince already screwed Brett, and now we're off and running with Austin McMahon angle, and it's going great. And now WWE is actually coming back and beating WCW in the ratings now. Now we got ourselves a fight. So, uh, this holds very dear to my heart. So, we're going to go up into this and, you know, uh, talk about some ads to there because everybody loves to add to there, right? So, everybody. But you know, even even though uh, the Spark debate, the Attitude Era is not my favorite era, though. Controversy. So the first match we get a battle royal to determine the number one contenders for the WWF Tag Team Champions, or cha- Tag Team Championship, which is we get teams such as the New Midnight Express, uh, which is Bombastic Bob, and both the de- de- both. De- Cast this Bart, whatever the fuck it is. Hardcore Holly and Bart Gun. That's what it is. Uh, we get Nation of Domination. We get Los Pariquas. We get the Headbangers. We get Too Much, which is Brian Christopher and Sky Tuhati, or Brian Christopher and Scott Taylor before they became too cool. The <laughs> DOA. Grandma's a sexy. The New Midnight Express. Uh, the True Commission. And uh, like I said, Nation Domination and uh, DOA and the Goodwins and the returning LOD, wait for it, 2000. Because, you know. What what was the difference? Say what? What was the difference? 
Um, they were originally known as the Road Warriors. And then they were LOD two thousand like, and they were LOD, and they came back and returned since they were close to the millennium. LOD two thousand with Sunny, and they had these weird masks on. They dropped a puppet and shit. So uh, they weren't that close to the millennium to call themselves two thousand. I'm about to say, I just want to say, yeah, we're definitely in 98, but you know, hey. So, uh, as you can think, this match was a clusterfuck to start off. It's to the point where it was when the when WrestleMania first came away, did a little promo thing. They even go into the national anthem or anything. They just started with the nation of domination coming out. And next thing you know, when they come out, we already with 13 teams already. Then LOD come out. It's just like, okay. Dude, this, is, this is how I feel the uh, Battle Royale going to start this year. Uh, yeah, that's how it starts every year. They, they they only bring out people only get an interest if they feel like they're actually going to probably win it. So, LOD two thousand wins. Uh, Sunny celebrates. Everybody is enjoying uh, Sunny's spiked titty brawl because it's matching LOD's. Uh, you know, you know, chest plates and everything. So they win the normal contenders for the tag team championships. Nothing too much to uh, say here. Now, next up was WWF's attempt to match what WCW was doing with the Cruiserweights. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. But they tried to have a match at WrestleMania, which was Takamichinoku versus Agula. Am I pronouncing that right? I'm, I don't even know. I don't think you even care. First of all, I forgot to ask you, your thoughts on the Tag Team Battle Royal? I was just glad that it was over, to be honest. Like, I mean, I was I see people that I recognize, other than like, oh, there's a uh, hardcore Harley and there's Bart Gunn. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> other than that, I I kind of I ain't care. Like the past WrestleManias we've been doing, they've been having these unnecessary tag team matches that I don't care about. Yeah, welcome to the tattoo division and add to there. No, don't worry, it gets better in ninety nine two thousand. So, T- Taco Michinoku versus Agula. I'm pr- pretty sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Singles match for the... It's not the Cruiserweight Championship at WWF. It's the Light Heavyweight Championship. So, throughout the whole match, King is just trashing the match saying that Brian Christopher can beat both of these guys. He doesn't need to do all that high-flying stuff. By the way, Brian Christopher was not a good Light Heavyweight. Say what? You gotta put his son over. Don't care. Um. So, uh... Even though Brian Christopher was not a good light heavyweight or a good tag team or a good wrestler, okay, but or a good dancer or a terrible dancer. Oh, don't worry, we'll, we'll get to the years when we talk about that stuff. <clears throat> then, uh, so Taco Michinoku uh, defeats Agula and uh, with the, with the Michinoku driver. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts on this light heavyweight match, and could they hold a candle? To what WCW was doing with their cruiserweight division. I mean, it's okay. Ninety eight. That's back at the time when they had like Eddie Malenko. Yes. Uh, Psy- Psy- Psychosis, the Juice, Conan. Yeah, and they, they can't hold a candle. To- <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. They can't hold a candle. To Jericho. They, 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 they had all those people. Okay, wasn't. No, he wasn't a cruiserweight. No, but uh, who, who was a cruiserweight? Chris, Chris wasn't a cruiserweight, was he? He 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 uh competed in that division until two thousand oh. until ninety nine when he tried to bump him up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He, so at, at at this point, he's in that cruiserweight division too. At that point, he's kind of te- he's kind of in that cruiserweight division. See. Well, thank you, uh, Mishinoki, for you know making a Mishinoki driver. Yeah, that's, that's, that's probably about it. I'm, I'm not sure. But at, at this time, people weren't used to the Lucha Libre wrestling and the Japanese strong style of wrestling just yet. They were used to, you know, the big Hulk, Hulk, Hulkamania guys sweating it out and bruising and beating the shit out of each other. That was the time. Much. Next up, we have Triple H, who is the <laughs> European champion takes on Owen Hart. Now, honestly, the story is that a couple weeks ago, Owen Hart legitimately sprained his ankle and Triple H further damaged it legitimately. 
But Owen Hart uh, finally got the cast off the day before WrestleMania and was set to go. And Owen came in here and once as Owen does, doesn't miss a beat. And Owen Hart took, comes in. Out. Say what? I told Triple H got that shovel out. Until uh, he got that shovel out. But, you know, at this time, Owen Hart had already lost, in my personal opinion, that momentum he had in 96 and 97 that that momentum kind of died and 98-99 were just kind of the low parts of the the Owen Hart life to be honest with you but he still does a job and he still has a good match to put on with Triple H so uh, that match you know uh, it, like I said pretty good Owen was doing his usual spots doing the Hurricane Rana and um, but Triple H was working on uh, his ankle a lot so you know Owen Hart did a great job after us uh, selling that meanwhile this whole time China was handcuffed to Sergeant Slaughter and he was a commissioner at the time so China would not interfere and you know having China handcuffed to Sergeant Slaughter I'm sitting there thinking like wow she looks extremely more in shape than he does uh, like, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I'm mad that she had to sell for slaughter because she really could have pulled his ass away. Could have, she could have carried him on her back the whole time. He really could. She could like she could have really broke the handcuffs if she wanted to. I mean, China at that time, that that woman was lethal. You know what I'm saying? Like she was just like chiseled out of you know stone and clay it's just like you know one of the greek mythologies just the face was just still kind of hard like it's kind of like you know that they made a statue they just made a little slit for the mouth that's what it was <laughs> that's what it was but um so uh china finally threw some white powder in slaughter's face uh so that she can uh distract him and uh china low blow uh on heart Getting Triple H to chance to land the pedigree. And uh, <laughs> Triple H won the match. She suffers slaughter, Sergeant Slaughter afterwards. Um, your thoughts on the match and, you know, how China was treated in this match? I don't like the way China was treated. Obviously, she could have. Obviously, she could have just slung Sergeant Slaughter, honestly. But I do like Owen Hart uh, and the way that. Yeah, but you say it was real. His his injury was real. It was legitimate, yes. Okay. For him to be doing what he was doing and to come back the day before is uh, great. Like, it's, it's something that... Because, like, you know, Seth Rollins, he need to... You know. But Triple H and... They, I, think they get, I think they did a good job. Okay. Match. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, there's not that many bad on heart matches unless he doesn't have a good dance partner. So, um after that we get well, it's not WrestleMania thirty three just yet, but back then we get a mixed tag team match between <clears throat> oh, Mark Merrow and Sable versus follow me here, the artist formerly known as Gold Dust and Luna for Shine. I'm saying the level of weird on the one side of the ring is just beyond insanity. Because, you know, that whole 1998 when Goldust was doing the artist form, you know, as Goldust, a.k.a. the Prince thing. Um, very weird. Very colorful. And very what the fuck. Luna was a what the fuck thing, but she was a, a decent wrestler who literally carried Sable through this whole ordeal. Well, Sable was never a wrestler to begin with. Are you boys ready for the grind? <laughs> Sable was never really a wrestler to begin with. She just, my man was just like, get over there. And she she just, okay. Hold on. But Sable, Sable bombed Mark Merrow. Yeah, that was after. I, that. He was never a great, you know, like I told, every time somebody I talk about Sable, I always say what the only era of Sable I like. But other than that, Sable was just, nothing was great about Sable. Yeah. And especially yeah. when it came to the wrestling. So, Luna carried Sable, you know, she did more falling around, making her look great, like Daniel Bryan making Bray Wyatt look great. That's what uh she was doing. Mark Merrill was hitting the TKO on Goldust and tries to pin him and Luna breaks it up. 
But then at the end of the match, Sable hits a Sable bomb on Luna, and Mark Murray has a TKO on the artist formerly known as Goldust to win the mixed tag team match. Your thoughts on the match and the artist formerly known as Goldust? Well, I thought that gimmick was kind of... I didn't get it. Maybe people at that time get it, me going back and watching it. I'm about to say there's about 100% of people that don't get it. That's so. all. Well, okay. But uh, the match, as a mixed tag team match, Sable obviously had uh, disadvantages with her not being able to wrestle very good. <laughs> yeah, but, Correction. Uh, I'm sorry. From the um, the back sources of Lady Sketch in the background, I stand corrected that Sable TKO Luna opposed to Mark Merrill doing it to the Arch Women Orange Goddess. I did get that backwards. Oh. Yeah, so uh, my apologies out there to all some of that because I doubt oh, they gosh. give a shit. Oh, no. I cannot oh, no. imagine Sable trying to do a TKO. Yeah, well, <laughs> it doesn't matter. But I do think Lady Sketch for, you know, help correct that. I want to get the actual factuals on the review because, you know, it's a retro review. Why not? Uh, the Rock is backstage doing an interview with, I forgot who the lady was. But uh, this is where we do get the, the birth of the phrase, do you smell what the Rock is cooking? Or do you smell what I'm cooking? When she was asking him, you know, what would he do if he was the president of the United States? And he, the Rock said he preferred the ruler opposed to very heel Rock at this time. Very nation domination Rock. Because we're, get, we're setting up for the Intercontinental Championship match between the Rock versus Ken Shanrock. And the Rock comes out there with Kama Mustafa, Mark Henry, and D'Lo Brown. Now, this is the nation that I like. Uh -oh. that, that Say what? I said, that's the whole nation. Yeah, that's the old nation. Yeah, so that's the one that... And that's not the original nation, but that's the best nation. Kind of like the Horsemen. Ain't the original Horsemen, but... It's the best Horsemen. So, um... At this time, the Rock Bottom was not really known as the Rock's finisher. But, uh... The, the, the quote-unquote people's elbow... To be honest with you, wasn't even really at this time. The Rock was actually at this point where he was testing out different finishes because people was kicking out of the Rock Bottom, and they were definitely kicking out the People's Elbow. The only reason why the People's Elbow was ever that good was because the say what the theatrics. Damn that the people made it because he the Rock had the actors back when he was a heel. I mean, first of all, for somebody to, for somebody to, huh? It's the people's elbow, so the people had to get involved. I guess. It's still one of the dumbest finishing moves ever. Yeah, but we all love it every time we do it. I don't. Well. I didn't like when The Rock beat CM Punk 432-day reign okay. of the championship okay, with the people's he, elbow. With it, when he beat people with it, then it's different. But when he do it just to do it, I, I guess it's fun for everybody. I guess it's I have fun with it. I'm just well, playing devil's advocate to give you a hard time. It don't uh when he actually pin people with it, that's when it you know it it's like really it just don't it don't sit well. Okay, so um don't quote me. I believe what happens, because I do know it wasn't ending in a pinfall. What happened was, you know, Sharon had that character where he would just snap. He, would, uh, and he just snapped. <laughs> and then uh, I remember he put The Rock in, he the belly to belly, uh, where Sharon has one of the best belly to bellies in the business, by the way. He put The Rock in the ankle lock. And I remember D-Lo and Mark Henry and all of them trying to come in. And then Sharon, you know, snapping and giving them all belly to bellies. And Farouk tried to come down. And then um, he tried to help The Rock ask him for help. But then Farouk backed away because, you know, hey, they got a robbery going on. And The Rock's sitting there, oh, you know, The Rock's selling, screaming in pain. And Shan Rock would not let the ankle go. So Shan Rock gets disqualified for not breaking the ankle lock. So uh, 
I think uh, if I can correct it, because I know Lady Sketch me and Lady Sketch were watching it earlier, and so I kind of nodded off. They they stretched the rock to the back, and Shamrock attacks the rock on the stretcher. That's why I figure, okay. So, yeah, the rock gets on the stretcher because, you know, that's what happens when you have a bad ankle. You know, you don't get helped by two people. You get a stretcher. But then Shamrock goes to attack the rock, which furthers their rivalry going towards the king of the ring and so forth and so uh -huh. on. So, your thoughts on the match, Rock versus Kid Shamrock. And then, go ahead, Mark. It barely went five minutes. It was a very short match. And I thought they could have got... I, I like the Rock and Ken Shamrock feud. I thought they could have got more time to tell a better story. But what is your opinion? Well, later down the line, they uh, they did end up getting more time. You know, different matches they was in. But this one wasn't the best out of the bunch. Don't know what get out of Huh? So I don't know what get out of way. But this one is like The Rock. Okay, wait. At this time, what actually was he using to put people away? Yeah, The Rock Bottom. Okay, like was it just coming in or was it like established? It was still working out the kinks of it. Like kind of like the RKO. Kind of like the RKO. Kind of yeah, kind of like that. Okay. So it wasn't really perfected. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, sometimes it looked like a choke slam. Huh? No, no, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. The Undertaker, that, that was Undertaker's fault. The Rock always like a rock bottom. <laughs> that was the Undertaker's fault. That, that was he all the Undertaker's jump. fault. He didn't he did jump. The, no, Diesel didn't jump. Diesel so. did jump. He, and then Undertaker was supposed to pick him up. Undertaker just got tired and was like, oh, I made this look bad and hugged him on the way down. You know, he fell on his own. No, that is Undertaker's fault. Well, that's the only fault that he had. Wait, wait, that. Oh, his slippery ass gloves he had on probably what it was. I mean, he only had two balls and gloves. It was a uh, it was a uppercut or you know what? I'm finna going this. These Undertaker gloves. Okay. Undertaker, yeah, when well, they were stupid then, he's stupid now. <laughs> so, uh, the Rock wins here. Now it's time to go on to a tag team. Dumpster match for the tag team oh, championships. The dumpster brawl. <laughs> yeah, the way you win is both opponents have to be put in the dumpster. There was only like two dumpster matches, maybe three, in WWE or F. And I remember, the, and they always evolved DX. Yeah, DS are the match that put people in the trash. Okay, yeah, well, I remember when, when they they uh, faced the Dudleys in 2000 for King of the Ring, but then also Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie. For people who don't know who Chainsaw Charlie is, it's Terry Funk. Okay, but that match didn't count because technically, isn't that the match where New Age Outlaws came out? This is the match that has New Age Outlaws in it. I'm talking about the one before that just, that you just said. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I guess. I'm just saying two, maybe three. Cause I think that's the match they were having, and they came out and put them in a dumpster. And it, it, it ran off the stage, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, regardless of the fact, Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie, which is WWE's terrible excuse for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because Terry Funk, all he has is a stocking over his head, and he is very non intimidating with the with the red thermal, and for some reason he has overalls on. I can still see the crack of his ass. I don't get that. <laughs> Versus the you know the New Age Outlaws Billy Gunner Road Dog, uh, it's what you can expect in a Mick Foley Russell and Terry Funk hardcore match. They get the shit beat out of them. They take the hard spots. They get the heads into the dumpsters, and T Terry Funk takes you know the most stupid moon salts and hurts himself and keeps talking about so he dislocated his shoulder. How about you stop doing it? So I do uh. Cactus Jack, you know, once again does dumb shit by trying to, I think, do a elbow into the dumpster, and I don't think nobody was even in it. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest I with you, think about it was in there. I like he just he just wanted to dive in there just to dive. It, it, yeah, I'm like, don't you know, do do this shit. Um, 
Then like, then they do like a bad body job. Not a bad body job, but a uh, what's that move? Not it's a, a side a side shoulder back toss. Tell. You talk about shoulder back toss? Yeah, yeah. So this goes uh goes back and forth uh with them trying to attempt to put each other in the dumpster. Um. Uh, I believe that the New Age Outlaws power bomb Terry Funk into the dumpster, and I think while Terry Funk was laying in that in that trash, he was thinking like, "Damn, I'm at the end of my rope." Because uh, there's no way I'm having them power bomb me in no damn dumpster. I don't give a fuck what kind of trash is in there to break my fall. But uh. Somewhere doing some hardcore matches, so he don't care. Uh, Terry, Terry, Terry Funk is, he can barely walk right now. You should see him at House of Hardcore. He can barely walk. Uh, I don't want to get this wrong here. Uh, there was a forklift involved. You know, they must have called Baron Corbin to try to borrow his. And <laughs> or, or Brock Lesnar. Yeah, was, Brock, Brock Lesnar ain't driving no damn forklift. Hey, he picked up the big show with it. So, hey. Yes. Um... So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So they go backstage and they throw the New Age Outlaws in there and they put the forklift down on the top to keep them locked up in there. Okay, I, I, I remember that vaguely because I was just like, wait a minute. They got their ass beat this whole match and they won a championship? And so <laughs> Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie are your new tag team champions. This is a thing. In 19, right, how, long did that last? how long did that last? It doesn't matter. This was a thing that Terry Funk and Cactus Jack, Terry Funk and Mick Foley won a fucking tag team match. For ta- Trust me, it just doesn't last long because the Chainsaw Charlie gimmick did not last long. That was only for 1998 only. Because you know what's funny? He was Terry Funk in ECW, which he was supposed to be. And he comes here and we get this shit. The man had a stocking <laughs> over his head. So man, he probably wanted to try something different. I don't, just let people give a chance to do something different sometimes. You know what? Look, I understand you. You trying to be a man of the cloth right now. I understand you trying to be humble. I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this shit is. This shit was ass. This shit was bad. <laughs> I like tell you for what way it is. Look, I love people too. I, I, I try to hashtag. Look, the logo of the channel is hashtag give it a chance. But this shit. I was just like, okay, I, I was kind of shocked. So, your thoughts on the dumpster match and Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie actually beating the New Age Outlaws and putting the forklift on top of the dumpster? The, okay, for one, the dumpster match didn't... Okay, you put two people in the dumpster and then that's it or you have to close it? Oh, uh, you kind of got to close it. And that's it? Yep, great detective work. Yeah, that, that's, that's it. So, like, why wouldn't, when they put both of them in there, they didn't just close the thing? You lost me. Like, I, could, I thought both of them were in there. And I thought Charlie, Chainsaw Charlie and Mankind was in there at the same time. I mean, Cat Jack was in there at the same time. Yeah, he tried to close and he gave them the Man of Claw. Yeah, really, a Man of Claw going to stop somebody from, man. Why? Yeah. Is, look, <laughs> okay, so you didn't like the match too much. I like it, but like the dumpster part is the part that loses that loses me. Loses. I like the act. Huh? Loses or loses? <laughs> loses lost okay. me. Uh huh. I got you. But the uh, that part, I like the match, like the, for the hardcore aspect. But the dumpster part is the part that lost me because of like all you gotta do is put them in a dumpster and close it. And that's it. To be honest with you, container-based matches are stupid to me. The only container-based match that's not stupid to me is a casket match. So I like the casket oh. match. It's Undertaker's gimmick. I do not like ambulance matches. I do not like dumpster matches. I don't like the shit where you got to th- throw somebody in there, and then the match is you got to beat them so bad, you got to throw them into this and call it a day. I'm just like... Oh, you I, don't like the stretcher match? I'm not, it's not really, the stretcher match, because the stretcher match is kind of, I, I get it, I understand it, but I'm just like, there, there, there's only been two good, maybe three good stretcher matches in the history 
of the WWE? Is is one of them involved in Triple H and uh, Randy Orton? Uh, not at all. Is Randy Orton involved in any of them? Not at all. So who's involved in the, in the stretcher? Uh, I enjoyed the Batista Shawn Michaels one. Okay. I enjoyed the Brock Lesnar Big Show one. Okay, me too. And I enjoyed Jeff and Matt Hardy. That was a stretch match? Yeah, after WrestleMania uh, 25. I thought they just had an I Quit match after that. No, they had a stretch match on SmackDown. Then they had an I Quit at Backlash. Okay. Which was which the finish was stupid of that. But we will get to that. Um... So, yeah, I, I was never a big fan of the container-based matches, and the dumpster is probably one of the most stupidest things that I have seen in the I just rather them had a flat-out street fight and do it that way. Yeah. But, once again, you have a dumpster because you don't want the outlaws to take a pinfall loss and look weak, and especially when you're getting pinned by these old guys who the old guys should be kind of putting the young guys over. But, you know, this is the attitude there. So... Moving on now, we get one of my favorite storylines of all time. The Undertaker versus his brother oh Kane. God, it must be Kane. It's, it's got to be Kane. It's got to be Kane. Kane was, at this time, one of the scariest and one of my favorite wrestlers at the time. Kane was, uh, for people who don't know, was you know following the Michael Myers type gimmick. And it worked. He pulled it off. He scared the shit out of me with that one crazy eye he has. And how every time they beat him down, he just sit right up. And I was just like, okay, this guy. And the mask was creepy. But the Undertaker vowed to his parents. And he went to the grave and said, I will never fight my flesh and blood. And Kane was sitting there doing the... He, he has the same powers as the Undertaker and striking lightning down. And then Undertaker is like, you know, I will strike down the face of defiance. And they will just strike lightning to the ring. Did, did, yeah, he uh, sets Undertaker on fire at the Royal Rumble that year in a casket. That was a deep-ass casket, by the way. So, he sets the casket on fire and he does Undertaker's pose. Really campy shit that I enjoyed back in the day. This is probably why I like Lucha Underground. By the way, quick plug is on Netflix right now. See the first two seasons. Check it out. Anyway, <laughs> what'd you say? I said seasons one and two. Season one and two. Hey, hey, have you started watching it yet or have you watched it before? Yes, I have. Exactly. You know how good it is. So, um, right now, the Undertaker can't take it now. It's time to teach his brother a lesson. So, at WrestleMania, we get the Undertaker versus Kane. So, Kane comes out first. To that, you know, very red uh, omulus light with Paul Bearer with the blonde hair. Did not like that Paul Bearer at all. But, you know, I like the one with the dark hair and the dark mustache because you know, he looks more dead. No, no, no guy rest his soul. But I'm just talking about, um, yeah, but this cane is uh, uh, pretty scary. Then the Undertaker George come out, you know, to that. It's like, you know, they all coming out. It's like, they're getting ready for the Undertaker. Then you hear that gong. Then the Undertaker comes out. And he comes all through the, the droids. And he comes through all the fire. You know, Undertaker was how to make a rest, a, a, a entrance at WrestleMania. Even though his zombie entrance was the best one. Just saying. Wait, is this the Minister of Darkness? No, we get Ministry of Darkness next year. Well, I mean, this is the Lord of Darkness. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, I know it's kind of hard to keep up. This is the Lord of Darkness. Okay, wait, no, I'm trying to keep up. Well, I keep up with my theme song sometimes. Is this the one where Undertaker had, like, it was, like, talking in his interest theme? Oh, get up out of my house. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, the Ministry of Darkness one. Yeah, he was like, uh... He was just talking, deep talking. Yeah. Oh yeah. No fancy oh. thing. Yeah, I got you. No, that yeah, was um, yeah. that was actually next year that okay. it happened. So um, Undertaker comes down and he goes face to face with Kane, and everything that Undertaker's trying to throw at Kane, Kane is just matching it and is overpowering the Undertaker. But before the Undertaker comes out, Pete Rose is in the ring. And he's doing. He's the special guest announcer for this match, 
And, you know, uh, he talks about the joke about Bob Barker. He got a WrestleMania tickets, but he couldn't pick him up. How about it? That, I, I was like, really? That, that <laughs> is so lame. Yeah, you know, so, uh, <laughs> you know, you, hey, look, you, you got to, you, Pete Rose, you know, he a Philadelphia legend. I mean, damn, I, I, I don't know what to say about it. But uh, it, it, it was funny, you know, because Pete Rose was being what he was. But then Kane comes out. And then Tombstones, Pete Rose, which is going to, to lead to two other WrestleManias where Pete Rose comes back out for revenge for Kane. And then Kane has been inducted him to the Hall of Fame. How sweet. So Kane over, is overpowering The Undertaker. He tries to put him in a tree of woe. Tree of woe doesn't work. Great spot. You know, Undertaker who dives over the ropes uh, all the way up until WrestleMania 26 until he can't do it no more. <clears throat> oh. Is he dive and then like didn't he miss and go through the table? Yes, that was a great spot. He died. This is back when Undertaker was in shape. He dived and Kane caught his ass and flung his ass to the table. And I was like, how great was that spot? And then, but you know what? Undertaker is doing. He's giving everything to Kane. A choke slam. Kane kicks out. A tombstone. Kane kicks out. Then he does a second tombstone where Kane actually, if you look close enough, he like his neck, it's like crinkled up. It looks like it snaps. It's a kind of a brutal sight to see. And Kane still kicks out of the tombstone. And uh, Kane was a beast. Say, say what? Kane was a beast in them days. Yeah, Kane was a straight beast. I mean, this back when Kane was tombstone invader. You know what I'm saying? So, uh,. That man, that was that was a strong man right there. Then even Kane was hitting a choke slam and a tombstone, and then Undertaker kicks out. But then Undertaker hits a third tombstone on Kane to the point where he has to actually give a leg cover to Kane. One, two, three, and as the three hits, Kane still actually kicks out, and the Undertaker barely wins against Kane at WrestleMania. And I think now is when they started kind of briefly hinting at the streak. Do you think so? They really didn't start. How many, how many did he have at that time? Like nine? This was, let's see. It was WrestleMania 7, 8, 9. Uh, he missed 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we're at 8 right now. No, the, the, we're, 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 we're at seven. We're at seven. Next year is eight. And then uh, 17 is nine. And that, that's when they really started going, like, untake a streak. And Triple H is going to end the streak. And then that's when we really started counting. So. Okay. That, that's what it was. But, yeah, he, he barely escapes with... um. Uh, winning. And Undertaker... I mean, Kane attacks Undertaker... After the match, and he uh, hits Undertaker with a steel chair, and then Tombstone pile drives him on the steel chair, and they leave. And Undertaker sets sets up and knows that you know you can't keep the dead man down. And it's you know he gets up and leaves the ring. Now your thoughts on that matchup, Kane versus the Undertaker for the first time, and how'd you enjoy Kane? I thought it was good. I mean, I enjoyed the match personally myself. Uh, did you? Okay, did you enjoy it, or you just thought it was like, uh, you know, a good interaction between Kane and Undertaker? <clears throat> I I really enjoyed. It. I thought this was Undertaker's best match since Diesel. And yeah, actually, I, I thought I thought it was better than the Diesel match because he did a choke slam one time. <laughs> yeah, well, he did choke slam right. And you can say Kane is heavier, maybe look. Uh, well, I don't know if he he, he like he's more cut than Diesel. I don't know, but they're so big. Dude, those are two big guys. Yeah, it, it, I well, I liked it. Like um, this could be one of my favorite Taker matches, but it's not my favorite. Maybe it, it's up there in the top five or ten. Well, I already know what the first one is, or what it should be. What, what you think my first one is? Uh, him versus Sean. Which one? 25. Yeah, okay. 
anybody that says 26, and I'm not disrespecting anybody that says 26, but 26, it had moments to it, but it was it, it was slightly shorter, and it didn't have that, that fault, because I knew Sean was on his way out. So I knew Sean was losing. To be honest. I actually was, was uh, kind of... I don't know. I, I kind of wanted him to win. I mean, I want him to win at 25, but you know, hey, we all can get what we want now, right? But you know what? It's time for the main event with the DX band. Okay, so. Mike Tyson, Special Enforcer. Yeah, so Mike Tyson, Special Enforcer, is here. And he has obviously been joining DX all throughout the storyline. They've been screwing Austin and giving him a hard time. And um, they come out to the the, uh, the DX band music, which is the, the fist song, which I like. I like that one actually better than the, the original DX song, to be honest with you. So, uh, Shawn Michaels comes out with all the braids. With wait, wait, was, this, was this the one where he came out live, where the dude was performing live? Yes. Okay, okay. I gotta remember. <laughs> yes, and the the guy was out of sync, and you know, God rest his soul. But you know, he was out of sync and everything. But you know, hey, Vince liked it. That's what it said, and that's what it was. But so, and then of course, Stone Cold comes out, and we are on for Shawn Michaels versus Stone Cold Steve Austin for the WWF Championship. And by the way, no matter who wins this match, this is the last time. We get the Winged Eagle Championship belt, mm-hmm. which is sad because we go into the. We, I, I did like the Attitude Era Championship. Don't get me wrong, but I did. I I have the Winged Eagle Championship belt. I want it. Bret Hart signed it. It's something special to me now. So, you, you, I, I I don't know, but so uh, Shawn Michaels' back was hurting him very much. So from that cat, that entry he had from the casket match, with Undertaker in January, and he was already mad. He had to put over Austin, and Undertaker said, "If you don't put over Austin, we gonna have a fucking problem. I'm gonna whoop your ass in the back." So you know, Sean said, "Um, he ain't gonna fuck this shit up." So, but Sean, as as the performer he is, gave the best match that he could. They all take it up to the DX stage, and they go run into all the instruments and everything, and. uh Triple H and China were thrown out by the referee to go in the bag after trying to interfere. And uh, Austin and Michaels, like I said, are exchanging back and forth. But then uh, Sean goes for a super kick. Austin reverses it and gets that famous stunner. We've seen that famous sequence over and over again. And then Mike Tyson. Like what you say? I said, I do like that sequence that they do with the stunner, the super kick into the stunner. Exactly. And uh, Mike Tyson reveals that he is with Stone Cold. Comes in there, gives a slightly fast count. <laughs> slightly. Yeah, so, uh, that was a fast count. One, two, three. Austin wins, baby. Austin wins. So that was not a one. Two, that was like one, two, three. Yeah. So uh, Mike Tyson kind of, I guess, botched the count. Everything from uh, cause uh, Mike killed who, cause he was a, uh, uh, he was not unconscious. So he, Stone Cold. Mike he does. Stone Cold is like, Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! The Austin era has begun, and JR has not lied. This was the birth of the Austin era because Austin dominated 1998. And Austin also slightly tried to dominate 1999, but he didn't dominate as much as The Rock was coming up at that time, just like Triple H was, was dominating 2000. The Rock was like, hold on, brother. Yeah, but in 1998 though, Stone Cold dominated that year. So that was that was year was meant for him. So it's the passing of the torch. Shawn Michaels gets up and is mad that uh, Tyson had turned his back on him, and then Tyson throws a sick, a sick forearm because he can't throw a punch. A sick forearm, which looked like it hurt the fuck out of Shawn Michaels, and yeah. laid Shawn Michaels out. Yeah, and- and then drape the shirt. Be yep, and drape the shirt over his face, and Sean didn't like that. So, what did you think of the main event of WrestleMania 14? 
I mean, match wise, I thought it was straight. You know, Shawn Michaels never had a bad match. Oh, Stone he Cold. has some. Okay, okay. Technically, you, you want to go into detail. But Shawn Michaels, I don't think. I think this match was good, especially with Stone Cold. Stone Cold is a good partner. Uh, you know, better than most people. Well, not most people. Some people that people are wrestling against. And uh, I don't know. Did you like the chemistry in this match? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, honestly, I can tell that Shawn Michaels' back was hurting him. So that played a yeah, part. That, 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 that played a part. Wasn't this the last match before he went out? Say what? Wasn't this the last match before he went out? Exactly. Yes, it was. Okay. So I, I could tell oh. something was hurting him. So I understood that. I mean, honestly, if he was at 100%, I would have liked it a little bit more. But you know, I, I get what I can. I get what I can get. So, but, uh, so, I enjoyed the match. I thought this was an underrated WrestleMania. What do you give it as an overall grade, prime time? This one I give a B. I would give this WrestleMania a B minus. I think it was underrated. Undertaker and Kane killed it for me. I thought that was the best match of the night. Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels was a solid main event. I knew Shawn was hurting, but him having those kind of back problems and still. Able to do what he did was great. Triple H versus Owen Hart was a solid undercard match. The Rock against Shane Rock, I enjoyed the dynamic, but they could have went longer. I did like the hardcore elements of the Cactus Jack, Chainsaw Charlie, and New Age Outlaws. I just didn't like the whole. I just was. Not, I'm not a fan of dumpster matches. Uh, can I say one thing? Sure. For Shawn Michaels to have a back injury, and for him to have a career already, he could have just retired then. But he came back and he had a brand new career. He did. He had a whole second run with the company. His second yeah, he run. He had a whole second, whole another career, which made it much better for him. Exactly. Honestly, which one did you, did you like better? His first run or his second run? I like both, but uh, the people that he wrestled in his second run was more. Well, okay. I like the second run because of the. You know, he was at the top. He didn't have to just face Bret Hart and then, you know, the Stone Cold. He, he got to face different ego because he was, I guess, in it longer. I don't know. if Was he in it longer the second time around? No, he was in there longer the first time. Okay. I mean, well, it, I mean, it depends on how you look at it. If you start from his career as like a rocker and everything, well, then it was like, okay, well, he was in there for like 10 plus years the first run and then close to... Uh, eight years the second run but if you count as a single star they're both kind of like the, the same because he started becoming a single star in 1992 and then in 1998 he had to retire and then he became a single star in 2002 and retired in 2010 so his you know his single run was a little bit like, I, me personally I like, I like his second run a lot because he got to do matches with Kurt Angle Randy Orton Ric Flair those kind of the Batista. Got, the people that he got to do it with, I, that's what I like. Exactly. So, yeah, he wasn't, like I said, stuck with the Bret Hart's and the Diesels of the world. He got to go against some of the, the newer, fresher guys, which I enjoyed. So, and but. Then, like, when he, my bad. No, 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 no go ahead. I like, say. To, I, got, I like when he got to go against younger people. Like, that Shelton Benjamin match was great. Oh, that was, that was beautiful. The, uh, like, you know, honestly. You know, people, okay. People, obviously, watching Shawn Michaels grow up, say, I want to wrestle him. And I like, like, John Morrison. I thought they had good in ring chemistry when they did wrestle, like, the, the few times they did. Uh huh. I agree. Like, cool. yeah. Well, so it's all good. Um, so. You give it a B, I gave it a, I'm going to give this, like I said, a B minus. It, it, it was a solid show for me, and, you know, it's, it's one of under, an underrated favorite. But how did you guys enjoy WrestleMania 14? We are well into the Attitude Era, and we have three more WrestleManias in the quote-unquote Attitude Era. And next WrestleMania that we do is WrestleMania 15, and they come to the City of Brotherly Love. And I have a problem with it. 
yeah they have they had i have a problem with it so uh make sure you guys stay tuned for that one we're going to have a couple special guests on here other than just prime time we're going to have jd moxie and we're going to have quattro join us for the philly edition of wrestlemania 15 so once again i'm your host mr uh it's nc in the place to be channel which only mr a and e and of course he's not Deion Sanders, but he's prime time Make sure y'all keep it retro. Yep. Like I said, keep it retro. Don't forget about the old school. Know the old school's coming from. That's the kind of guy that I am. And stay tuned for us till tomorrow where we review WrestleMania 15 from the city of brotherly love. Remember, there's a WrestleMania every day up until WrestleMania 33. So keep it retro, y'all. It's time to take a listen. Swag on zero A and E. It's the coalition. We talking comics, both Marvel and DC. The factory at this and the WWE. Anime too. What a surprise! If you digging what I'm saying, go and like and subscribe.